Hey guys, in this video we're going to give you a full on like technical tour of the Corsair A80. We already did a video, a tour video of the A80 and we'll link it below so check that out. That's more of like a surface level tour, um, just kind of going through the boat real quick just so you can get an idea of the layout of the boat and stuff like that. This is going to be much more technical, we're going to go over the systems and just all the details of the boat basically opening up every single little hatch and just touching every piece of the boat and just going over it. You should know before we get started that the Corsair A80 has two versions. There's a standard version which is this boat and the sport version which basically there's just some minor differences that make it a little more high performance. So this boat is 28 feet 8 inches long and it has a total beam of 22 feet 3 inches when the floats are folded out and that's the same whether it's a standard or the sport version. When the beams are folded in for on the trailer it's 8 feet 2 inches wide and that keeps us road legal when we're trailering it and both boats both versions of the 880 are just over 3600 pounds dry. Um, that's the factory spec weight and that's the same for both models. So let's start at the bow and we'll go through literally every single piece of the boat. All right, you guys, if we start up here at the bow, you can see we have the bow sprit, which has right here the attachment point for the screecher. That's the tack of the screecher. And then we also have the tack line for the spinnaker at the end of the bow sprit. The sport version has a longer bow sprit and it has a bob stay to help counteract the forces of the tacks of the sail. And uh, this version, because it's a shorter bow sprit, doesn't have that bob stay. If we come back just a little bit, you can see the anchor roller right here. And then we have a rolling furling jib, which is around 95%. I believe the sport version has a hank on jib. All right, if we open this compartment, here's where the anchor lives. And then we also have uh, where the bow sprit attaches. So if you had to take this bow sprit off because it's too long for the trailer, um, you can detach it there and and just slide the bow sprit forward or aft this way um, and just kind of shorten it up there. And you would have to do that if you use the mast stand which inserts into the post on the trailer. You would have to push this in to be able to get that mast stand up in front of the boat. If we move aft just a little bit, we obviously have our opening hatch above the V-berth, the opening hatch above the, the head, and then just um, a platform to be able to step on, and then our 100 watt flexible solar panel. Watch out, Jets. Go. Um, I want to show you inside here because this is where the dagger board is, and this is different from other Corsairs because the dagger board stays below the deck even when it's fully raised. Other Corsairs, the dagger board sticks up above the deck when it's fully raised. Um, and another difference is, I believe on the other Corsairs, in order to take the dagger board out of the boat, uh, you have to take the mast down. I think the mast kind of uh, obstructs you from being able to take that dagger board all the way out. Whereas on this boat, you could potentially take the dagger board all the way out of the deck without putting the mass down. So if we just kind of bend this solar panel up, could put it over here, and we can see kind of how the dagger board works here. Um, here's the dagger board up line, the red line, and that's just on the cheek block. Um, so it starts at the top of the dagger board, runs through the cheek block, and just gets pulled back. So when you pull that line, it slides the dagger board up. The dagger board down line is this green line, and that starts at the top of the dagger board here. It runs down through a cheek block at the bottom of the dagger board housing, and then back up through this cheek block to redirect it aft. And they both run into the cockpit with their own clutches. So if you want to pull the dagger board down, you pull that down line and it forces it all the way down or, or vice versa when you want to pick it up. The dagger board does float. So there is a certain point where you can just drop the up line and it'll slide down and just kind of float in that position unless you force it um, further down into its all the way down position. Speaking of the dagger board being down, the boat draws just one foot five inches when the board and the rudder are all the way up. Um, once you put that dagger board and the rudder all the way down, the boat's draft is five foot three inches. This is a self tacking jib and basically that just means that the jib sheet runs through this track system so it dead ends here through a block, up to a block on the clue of the jib, back through this block on the track, and then back to a winch back there. So basically there's just one sheet line for the jib, 
and when you tack or jibe, you don't have to do anything to the jib. It just, this slides as you tack. And yeah, the jib just tacks on its own. So, which is pretty cool. We're not used to something like that, but uh, it, it, it makes tacking and jibing simpler with, you know, just one less step. The sport version, I believe, comes standard with um, a little bit bigger jib and does not have the self-tacking jib because the sport version is assumed that it's probably a little more for racing so you'll probably have more crew on the boat to be doing maneuvers and uh, and you have a sheet running to both sides of the boat just like you would you know conventionally but with just the two of us it makes things a lot easier so this is something else that's due to us, but not new to Corsairs. It's a it's a furling boom, and here's the handle to, to furl it up. Um, so basically, you twist the handle, it rotates the boom, and it wraps the whole mainsail uh, around the boom. When you want to lock it into place, you just stick the thing right into there, and it locks in place. So the mast is rotating. That way it's a nice smooth transition over the mast onto the sail. It's basically integrating the mast into the sail and it's just a, a more efficient wing to say it simply. Um, I believe on the sport version you actually have a positive rotator where you can force the mast to rotate how you want. Whereas this one, it just kind of rotates on its own and then it has this line as its like limiter so it doesn't over rotate too much. It just keeps it uh, in check there. On the mast we have all of our halyards. So right here is a screecher halyard. This is the jib halyard. On this side is the spinnaker halyard and then the main sheet halyard, and they're all on their own clutch on the mast, but they all are able to run through blocks, um, back through an organizer and into the cockpit of the boat. So this is a carbon fiber mast uh, painted black. It's around 40 feet tall on the sport version. It's a taller mast. I believe it's around 45 feet tall. So you get that extra sail area with it. It's a very simple rig on this boat. It's just a four stay, a wire four stay, because there's a furling unit on it. Um, and then two shrouds and they're Dyneema shrouds with lashings. The thing that keeps the mast in column is just the diamond wires and um, obviously stainless steel wire running through some spreaders and then keeps the mast uh, nice and in column. Relatively simple, simple rig. Here's the topping lift line right down here. Um, goes runs to the back of the boom and you could just change that length. These sails are laminate sails, um, Doyle, basically racing sails, same with the jib as well. I don't know, I think normally the standard version may come with cruising sails. You might be able to upgrade them to these. Um, I think, I'm not positive. But the sport version obviously comes with racing sails. So when we go to raise the main sail, it's actually, uh, we have this track on the back of the mast um, and there's a bolt rope on the leech of the sail. Uh, so the bolt rope goes through the pre-feeder um, and the headboard of the sail hooks in the here and then as well as on another ring uh, the halyard shackle so we you know we raise the halyard this slides up the track and then the bolt rope gets feeded through the pre-feeder and into the track right here and it gets pulled up all the way up the mast there here's the Cunningham and we can hook this onto the tack of the sail uh, just with this little hook right here and then we can just control it by hand this easily allows us to control how much luff tension there is and just how much shape is in the sail. When well, we're not using it, we just store it right up there. Just tighten it. Here's the stainless steel ball that the mast rotates on. You can see down there. Over here is Here's the plate that the mass raising and lowering yoke sits on. So there's a little a little bracket here that sits on this plate and we use a thumb screw to tighten it up. And then a little pin that comes through here. And, and that's basically what the mass pivots on as we raise and lower it. We'll do a whole mass uh, or, or a full on set up on how to set this thing up from the trailer to the water. And we'll go into detail on that, but just that's your basic right there. So on the starboard side of the boat, obviously we have the starboard float, the forward trampoline, forward beam, the main trampoline. 
Here's the spinnaker tack line. We just have it kind of secured here, clipped on here while we're not using it. But it runs through the end of the bowsprit, through this guide, through a clutch, and to the back of the boat. So if we were going to fly the spinnaker, uh, we'd hook the tack of the spinnaker up to this line here. And then we'd pull it through the clutch. It'd bring the tack of the spinnaker all the way to the end of the bowsprit there. Um, and we're ready to, to fly this, the asymmetric spinnaker. So obviously we have like a hiking strap here we could sit on on the float of the boat and keep our feet under the hiking strap uh, just for some extra security there. In the other video we showed you inside these halls but let me show you a little more detail in here. Come on and look. So they go way back there and there's actually three watertight compartments in these halls um, and you can see the bulkhead there on that side and you can see the bulkhead right on the other side right there. Um, so there's much more room going back that way. And then we have this hatch that secures nice and tight. And if you ever wanted to get into um, the other compartments, there's an inspection port right here. So you can open that inspection port. And then same thing back here is another bigger inspection port. All the way back there. Here is are the lashings that hold the shrouds nice and tight uh, to a shackle. And this version of the boat has what's called high field levers. If we want to fold the boat up, instead of having to loosen the lashings every time, we can just open up this cover here. Take this little pin out and open up the high field lever. Oh, I'm going to take this pin out and open up the high field lever and that releases a lot of tension on the boat not it doesn't detach it it's still attached it just really loosens it up nicely and you do the same on the other side there's enough play in the shrouds now where we can fold up the boat without having to undo the lashings um, every time so that's nice i believe the sport version does not have the high field levers just because it's extra weight and they, they rather undo the lashings than have the extra weight on the boat so so obviously I showed you guys the spinnaker tack line already um, through that clutch. And then we also have the screecher twing line. So if you were gonna rig this screecher, you'd hook up the tack to the little point on the bowsprit that I showed you before. You raise it with the screecher halyard, which is this red one right here. Um, and then it's on a continuous furler. So it's up there, it's raised on this furler. The furling line just kind of runs back here. And then the sheets of the screecher, both uh, one on either side, run through this twing line. And then back through this inner block here. And then to this winch for control. And that's the same on the other side. And then you can adjust this twing line uh, based on how much, how tight you want to sheet in the sheet of that screecher. Or if you're going pretty good downwind, you can let this twing line out still and still control um, the sheet tension over here on the winch. So just fold that seat up. And here is the folding mechanism down here. There's some pivot points down there on the boat, boat and some pivot point right here. Um, and basically what happens is you take this bolt out and then this part of the beam just comes up um, and it rotates on this pivot point and that allows the whole float to come in and the whole thing just pushes into the boat on that pivot point. Most of the boat's composite, but the folding structure here is all aluminum with uh, stainless steel hardware. And speaking of the bigger head sails, uh, we talked about the screecher real quick. The spinnaker basically just has two sheets. Um, so you, you can launch the spinnaker on the tack line and the halyard, and then the sheets on both sides run back to the strap uh, which has a block on both sides. So this is the outer part of the boat through this block and then to the winch here which controls the sheet of the spinnaker. Here's the cleat where you would just cleat off the continuous furling line for the screecher. Here's the helm seats, uh, one on both sides. We've been getting asked a lot if they're comfortable for long periods of time and I found, I, 
I found them super comfortable. I like how they have a backrest to lean on and you can lean out and kind of watch the luff of the sail and the telltales on the head sail there uh, while you're ste steering the tiller here. We'll go over the main sheet sheeting system. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to one. And then we have obviously the traveler. It's just all all tidied up now while we're at anchor. We, we tie a knot here in the traveler control line so it doesn't slide back and forth. So here's the engine on the boat. It's a little 9.9 .9 Yamaha. It's been working really well. We just electric trim tilt, which makes it uh, really easy to get up while we, once we set the sails and we want to turn the engine off, just electric trim up um, and you don't have to like come over here and be pulling it up or anything like that. It's been pushing the boat at uh, a solid six to six and a half knots when we're just cruising and then probably top speed around seven knots. It's just under engine alone with no sails. Uh, it runs off gasoline, obviously. So here's where the gasoline is stored. Um, it is a, how big is this tank? Three gallon tank. Um, you could probably fit a bigger tank in there. I don't know, depending on, on the dimensions of the tank. I guess your most restrictive part is just the opening here, but there's a decent amount of space in there. But three gallons, you don't really need much more than that. Sorry. The boats sail so well that we've been finding it's just easy. If there's any wind to sail, it's just way easier to sail. Even if you're tacking into the wind, um, it's easier and faster just to sail it than try to motor anywhere. So you would only use the motor to get on and off the mooring or if it's flat calm with no wind. Back here we have a swim ladder that folds down and then a little swim step. Sorry, it's a little dirty back there. This is the bracket that holds the mast, uh, the rear mast stand right here. And then here is the rudder cassette. So that daggerboard rudder over there just slides in and you can basically put it at any depth. You can you can have it sitting in here where there's just maybe a foot down um, and it kind of just snugs into place. You don't really have to do anything to lock it in place, especially when you're moving forward. The force of the water just keeps it there. After you've been sailing for a bit, you just gotta kind of pull it back a little to be able to pull it up um, just because the, the top of it gets jammed forward, but um, that's it's been super easy just to pull it back and then slide up. Most other Corsair boats have like a folding rudder mechanism and apparently this is, that's nice because it's like a kick up rudder. So if you hit anything, it just would kick up. Whereas this would probably, I don't know, you'd probably break something if you hit something. However, with the kick up rudder, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of pressure on the helm. You don't have great control when it's like partially kicked up and you want to try to steer. Whereas this, you can slide it up halfway, you reduce your draft by two or three feet and you can still have good control while you're steering. What was that? Oh, Jetty. Jetty hit the tilt. <laughs> and then right over here, we have a little shower. Just pull that out, twist it. And you could take a little shower on the stern deck back here. One thing that's pretty cool with this system is that the engine, when you're, sorry Jets, when you're steering the boat, the engine turns with the tiller. Um, and that's just due to this little control line. So let's, we'll loosen it up here. So this is normally loose, the engine's up while you're sailing. So. Once we're ready to come in from our sail, we put the engine down with that electric trim tilt. And then when we want steerage, we just pull this, uh, usually you're sitting over here, but you just pull this black line here. And that pulls, that locks that black line into the cam cleat. And now all of a sudden your engine and tiller are connected. It gives you much better steering. Pretty cool little system there. Here are the controls for the engine, the trim tilt, obviously. Um, the key goes right in here, and then the kill switch comes right here. And then here's the throttle. Normal, you know, normal forward is just forward, neutral, and then reverse. If you want to give the engine a little bit gas just to get it started, you push it all the way in, and you can just rev it up a bit while you're starting it if it needs it. And then you pull it back out, and you're good to go in and out of gear. I showed you already that the helm seats come up so that you can access that bolt under there when you're ready to unfold or fold the floats. Let me show you in these storage compartments, cockpit lockers. 
So this one has little Yamaha generator, a little 2000 watt generator slash inverter. Basically, here's your alternative power source. The engine will charge the batteries a bit, but uh, this can charge the batteries through its little built-in DC charger, which is this plug right here. You plug it into the uh, generator. You gotta make sure it's off eco mode to get the maximum uh, charging through its DC system. But then you can also plug in a regular, here's a master volt 10 amp uh, AC charger. Um, and you can plug that into the generator as well and get 10 extra amps of charging battery uh, to the house battery of the bow. I'll show you the house battery in a minute. There's a lot of storage back in these cockpit lockers. We have some of our safety gear back here, some extra PFDs, um, our ditch kits back here, and it goes back pretty far. These are where all the engine controls and everything are. And this generator sits in a nice little well back here, so it doesn't move around too much. Or it doesn't move around at all. And then you can close this cockpit locker and secure it shut like that. You can potentially put a little padlock on there if you wanted to. And then it's the same same dimensions over here on this side. Um, we keep all the lines back here, some cleaning supplies, um, and again, a, a spare uh, gas can that's not, it's empty right now. A lot of space back there. Little inspection port right here. This access is, here I'll show you. It's the back of the little 12 volt Dometic fridge. Um, in case you ever needed to get to that for some reason, then a little vent next to it. But here's a little tiny rope locker here. This is the jib frilling line. Just runs through a guide right there and then out the back side over here through the clutch for the frilling line. So we can pull that in tight. That would frill the jib in if it was out. Um, and then the clutch locks it. And then same thing that I showed you on the other side, the little twing line where the spare line sits in here. Um, and you can open that, let the twing out, let the sheet out for the screecher. That can all tuck in there nicely. I'll organize that in a bit. Star, the port side the same as starboard. I forgot to mention there's some nice little handholds. Uh, those black lines that stick through the trampoline are great handholds for uh, crew who are on the back of the boat there. Everything else is basically exactly the same over on that side. Um, here is the cockpit of the boat. All the, the winches and lines are run through here if you want them to be. So we have all our lines here, dagboard down line, the screecher halyard, the jib halyard, they can all come right to this this uh, winch here. Um, dagger board downline has a clutch, the other ones are clutched off on the mast. And then over on this side, you have the main halyard, uh, the jib sheet, which is on the winch right now, and the dagger board upline here. Jib sheet, main halyard, spinnaker halyard, and then the dagger board upline. This boat got equipped with this nice dodger so some isinglass up here some nice protection up here it does have some zip on clear sides that come down like down this way um, which when we were up north and it was really cold it was actually nice to have because like this little spot was really really warm um, and as soon as you come out here it got pretty cold so it was a nice little refuge and we did have some wet days that uh, this was really good protection when this is closed here's the Here's the companionway entrance. When it's closed, the washboard is just in this top position here, and then it slides down into its little groove. Nice solid washboard, and then the top of it here just lifts up, comes over, and kind of locks into place. It even has these little uh, locking mechanisms. You can lock this up with a key. Um, we haven't used that yet, but if you wanted to make it more secure, you have that option. So you lift this up, push it open, and then the washboard and you just put it right on top of this sliding hatch here. And it just sits right in there. And it slides in, nice and out of the way. And now it's completely open. Here's the B&G displays. There's no chart plotter on this boat. We have just, we just mounted this little scan strap mount here with an iPad mount. Um, and we've just been using Navionics on our iPad. Um, it's in a good spot where we can have the iPad plugged into the little USB charger here over on the electric panel. So that's been working out really well for us. Here's the little B&G displays that just display uh, boat speed, wind speed, 
wind angle, all your data you get from the masthead wind instrument and the uh, transducer down here. So that's all nice and clear right here on the displays. You come into the boat and you have your battery right here. It's a 160 amp hour AGM battery, master volt, strap down there. And then over on this side, you just have your shower drain pump, your sump pump there. So this table drops down right here and this whole area forms a little bed and when you do that you just take the the stand for the table drop it through this hole and right into this little mount there um, and now the table sits flush right here and you have these things to help support it just like that so we'll start forward again um here's the v-berth Nothing really up there, just that's where the anchor sits, right above where your feet would be up in that V-berth. Um, you could potentially, if you didn't want to, if you were to shower in here and you didn't want to get it wet, you could pull this down, zipper it, so now you don't get any of the V-berth wet or, I don't know, if a, crew is, if, if a crew is sleeping up there or something like that, um, you could do something like that. So you just leave it open and airy down here. Here's the head. So you just pull this line that pulls the head all the way out and then some manual flush head flush with salt water. Um, you, this pulls it most of the way out and then you can pull it an extra few inches if you need it. Um, there's a little gas strut back here so that it can't it kind of keeps it from sliding too much when it's fully extended um, or when you push it back into place kind of just keeps it forced back in there so it can't come out on its own. Under this V-berth, you can lift the cushions up and you can lift this big hatch thing up here. And that's the waste tank back there. I believe it's around nine gallons. Um, a little vent hose in the back there. Um, and then obviously the waste hose from the head. When the holding tank gets full and you're ready to pump it overboard, there's a through hole through the boat. Obviously by law you have to be a certain distance offshore um, to do that. But in order to do that, you open up this inspection port back here. And then you have your seacock right there, and that, if as soon as you open that seacock, it just lets the holding tank dump out underneath the boat. The holding tank is above the water line, um, so it's just a, a gravity dump basically right there. Here is obviously an awesome view out into the water over here. I, uh, I can't wait till we get into some clear water so we can look out and hopefully look at some fishies. But uh, this is actually it has a purpose. It's an escape hatch. So if this boat were to ever flip and you were stuck inside, this is your way out. And in order to get out, you would open this inspection port and you'd grab this little guy right here, this little hammer, little safety hammer, you'd take it out of its case and you'd smash it open. So we're thinking about doing uh, the Fort Lauderdale, the Key West race, and if we do, this is one of the requirements is to have an escape hatch. It's in there. There's a whole list of intricate rules, and one of them is to have an escape hatch. And um, there's a knife in here. They want you a knife by the escape hatch and stuff like that. So we have a little bit of storage right above this escape hatch. Just this little canvas thing on this little carbon fiber pole that sits there, and we have some shampoo, Sierra's brush. Um, this is the cushion that sits right on that table that when you turn it into a bed, yeah, you can probably put some clothes in there or whatever if you want to. And then over here we have the sink and then the sink that holds out the shower. Just pull that out. The water tank's about nine gallons. I'll show you where that's located. And you could shower in here. The water just drains down under this floorboard. And then when you want to pump it out, the switch isn't on, but you just hit the uh, shower pump, shower drain pump, and it pumps all the water out from under there. Just a little bit of storage underneath the sink here. Here's your toilet paper right there. Some plumbing behind this uh, this plastic sheeting there. Yeah, and then we got our hatch right above the head. And then the hatch right above the V-berth.
lot of people have been asking about headroom in this boat. For the most part, it's standing headroom throughout the boat. Um, even for taller people, I'm 5'8", and this is the head. So this is the only limiting headroom, really. And so over here, I stand straight up. So that's like five, what, seven? And then it gets a little bit shorter over here, but not too bad. So again, I'm 5'8", that gives you a good idea. And most of that is just due to this grate that they have in here. If they like took out this grate and it was just the regular floor like they have on in the rest of the boat, then you'd have full standing headroom. But obviously, if you're taking a shower in here, you need a drain and, and all that. So that's kind of limits it. Oh, it does have a red light for night. We'll shut this. And the head also has this closing door for privacy. All right, we walk out of the head and here's our transducer for those water instruments, the depth and speed through the water, everything like that. Here's a little access port that if you pull the dagger board out and you need it to do something on the cheek block on the opposing side of the dagger board housing, that's how you could access it potentially. Here is the full dagger board housing here. I showed you the battery and the shower drain pump. But if we go over here, there's some more storage and access, and I'll show you that. So we lift up this cushion. I'll just take them all. And we have uh, two access points, so we lift up that one. There's our fresh water pump and some plumbing. And if you look down there, I don't know if you guys can see, but right behind the battery is the bilge pump and float switch. And then this is just a little accumulator here for the fresh water system. And we can put that there and then we open this one up. And there's the water tank, which is about nine gallons. Little screen. Um, the water fill is right out here on deck. Little 12 volt, volt fan up here put those cushions back and then if we open up under all of these cushions here are some more storage so we got this little storage area there goes all the way forward all the way back and then this little storage compartment here good amount and then obviously storage that goes pretty deep behind this whole area here. Um, here's the little side curtains that I was talking about for the, uh, the Dodger up there. Just have some random stuff thrown back there for now. And then same thing on this side. Here's another seat over here on this side. Some more storage under there. Probably use that as a little pantry over here for the galley. And then a bunch of storage in all these cubbies back here. All the way through. So we just have a bunch of kitchen stuff back there for now. Here's the sink. Hot water, cold water. Um, a little cover on the sink to use as a cutting board or something maybe. The little alcohol stove. To fill this alcohol stove, you just take this off. Here's a little fill. You unscrew this, use a little funnel, you, you put some alcohol in there, and then uh, that's a little cover there. Put that cap on. Yep, that's where you can do your cooking. You could potentially fold these down, and they go into this little track. So you, you have this little pot holder here if you're out offshore and you want to cook. You can clamp them like into position and hold your little pot right there. All right, some more counter space over here. Here's the little Dometic drawer fridge. So you can kind of see how much room is in there. All right, here is the whole electric panel, 12 volt system. We have our accessories, which is like the wind instruments and stuff like that. Obviously the boat has running lights, which you can't see unless you're on the front of the boat, little nice LED running lights and then some masthead lights as well, the anchor light and the steaming light up there. Um, all our cabin lights, which are these LED cabin lights, which have been beautiful at night, nice and bright. Uh, shower drain pump, oh there we go, I left the switch on. Um, water heater, freezer is the fridge freezer over there. And then our bilge pump, so we have it on auto, we can put it on manual, can you hear it? it? Stays on auto, and here's also the light for the 
indoor cabin lights. Um, little USB thing right here. And it can tell us our voltage right now. We're at 11.9 volts. I should probably turn this off. In here we have a little bit more storage, but mostly it's um, the hot water heater. So this is a 12 volt hot water heater. In order to use this, you have to plug in the AC battery charger that I showed you, the 10 amp AC battery charger. You have to make sure the generator is off eco mode so it's using its maximum DC charging power. And you actually have to have the outboard running as well. And that will give you some hot water. We only used it once so far. It took an hour, but the water got super hot. And um, yeah, if you needed hot water, there it is. My wallet that I've been missing for three days. And like I said, we've been using it for some storage. Nice little locking compartment there. So you can see how much headroom is in here right now. Again, I am 5'8", and I have, what, another foot or so? Um, maybe 10 inches, but still plenty of headroom up to six something all through this part of the boat. Um, and then even into this F bunk here, so we can open up these stairs. They just pivot, and you can hop into the F bunk. And there we go. Plenty of length in this bunk. So you can see plenty of room. We have this little hatch right here. <laughs> here comes Jody. Hey, yo, what you doing? You want to come down? Come on. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Um, yeah, and then a bunch of storage up here for clothes or whatever you want to put up there. The other night we were in here, we had this hatch open. We were just looking at the stars while we were laying here, which is awesome. Yeah, I don't know the exact measurement, how wide it is. It's been fine for both you and I. We both have broad shoulders, uh, especially for our size. It's been comfortable, especially in cooler weather. Sometimes, like, if we feel like we get claustrophobic, we'll just swap and we'll you'll put your head down there and feet up here and I smell your smelly feet. But um, for the most part, it's been really comfortable, especially with this ventilation down here. Jay's like, what's going on? What you doing? You wanna come down? Come on, come on, come on, come on. So in terms of cruising on this boat, you could probably comfortably have uh, two in here, one person sleep there, and there may be two kids up there, or one, um, one adult up there. And so what's that? Four, comfortably sleep four, and then if it's nice weather and people want to sleep outside in the cockpit or on the trampoline so you could sleep plenty. I look forward to cruising on this boat and really seeing how functional it is while we're cruising. It is going to be so cool to have like a really fast light cruising boat. I hope you guys liked that video. I hope it was a little more technical and in depth. Um, we were getting a lot of requests for stuff like that so I hope I hit everything that you were looking for. If I didn't just let me know in the comments um, what you're looking for specifically and maybe uh, we can touch on that in the next video but if you want to see what we're going to be doing in the next few weeks with this boat and what we've done already just make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, check out our older videos and make sure the little bell notification button is clicked. YouTube algorithm like you will not see our videos if you don't do those things and engage with us. So make sure you leave a comment and hit those like buttons so that you don't miss anything from us in the future. We can't wait to just continue to sail this boat and cruise on it a bit and take it to some different places. And we're so excited. It's been such a blast. So we can't wait to do some more of it and uh, yeah, see where it takes us. So follow along. Did you miss me? Well, I hope you did. And if you notice somebody very familiar in the background <laughs> there she is that is adrenaline and she is still for sale we showed her to a couple people today and we've been showing to her to a couple people while we've been in town but if you guys are still interested or if anybody is interested make sure you click the link in the description because she is still for sale and she's looking awfully pretty sitting over there thanks so much for watching bye